Good day. My name is John Vanderput. I'm incoming president of APEGA. I'm going to start out by telling you a little story. A hundred years ago today, a few pioneering engineers on the University of Alberta campus had the idea to form an association. They'd ensure that anyone in Alberta who used the title engineer had the academic preparation and experience to uphold professional standards. They'd also make sure that the structures, the industrial plants, and electrical systems that these engineers designed would work and would contribute to the safety and well-being of their fellow citizens. That group was called the Association of Professional Engineers of Alberta, and it had 106 members. Most of our members at that time were men, although we did have female members from the very beginning. The first two female members graduated from the U of A in 1918. And although geoscientists were part of the association from the very beginning, it wasn't until 1969 that the PG All and PG Off designations were added. The name of the association was changed to APEGA with two G's, which stood for the Association of Professional Engineers, Geologists, and Geophysicists of Alberta. In 2011, we dropped one of those G's and we merged geology and geophysics into geoscience, creating the APEGA that you know today. Today's APEGA looks a little different than it did back then, but it functions just the same. It's truly humbling for me to be elected by my peers to become its 101st president and to help take this association into its next century of service to the public. Thanks for trusting me with this great responsibility. My primary role as president is to chair the council and executive committee as we provide governance oversight and direction to APEGA's very able staff led by Jane Gendron, our registrar and CEO. The other major part of my role is to represent APEGA publicly throughout Alberta and across Canada. I look at this new role as an opportunity to continue to give back to the profession that's given so much to me and has allowed me to make a positive contribution to society over the course of my career. I've been volunteering for APEGA for more than 25 years in a wide variety of capacities including serving two terms on council, spending time as a mentor, and conducting science demonstrations in elementary school classrooms. I also served on the discipline committee, helping to ensure that the very small subset of my peers who hadn't been true to their oath were held to account. As Pegas leader, I'm committed to ensuring public safety and well-being through the regulation of our professions, even as the world around us changes dramatically. The past months have been tough on all Albertans, Uncertainty can lead to fear, and at times, it seems there's more questions than answers. Council is working diligently to answer those questions, and is providing the governance oversight and direction that enable APEGA to remain nimble and to adaptable to the changing situation. And we are adapting. No professional development matters in the success of our members, so we're not sitting on the sidelines waiting for conditions to settle. Pushing forward to establish a framework and platform to deliver professional development sessions online through webinars, live streaming, or both. We're also planning a convention for members in training and university students in the fall. Of course, the pandemic isn't the only challenge we face. Regulators across Canada face pressure to demonstrate they can protect the public by ensuring their members are practicing competently, ethically, and professionally. That brings me to the main reason that APEG exists, and that is to regulate the professions of engineering and geoscience. Empowered by the Engineering and Geoscience Professions Act, the EGP Act, to grant licenses only to those who are qualified and to ensure that they remain qualified throughout their careers and to investigate and discipline those who fail to live up to our professional standards. Renewing this act is one of the things I'll be focusing on during my presidency. In 2014, APEGA began a multi-year review of the EGP Act. Although the professions, business, industry, and society have changed over the past 40 years, the Act had not. We held conversations and consultations with registrants, permit holders, and other stakeholders. When we were finished listening, in 2019, we compiled and sent a list of 163 recommendations to the government to modernize the Act. Updated legislation will give us the tools we need to continue providing fair and effective oversight. Dated legislation will also ensure that our registrants and permit holders continue to consistently reach and even surpass the high standards set by the public for the engineering and geoscience professions. Once the Alberta government passes the bill to amend the EGP Act, 
It'll be up to all of us as APEGA members to put the new tools into, into practice in the service of the Alberta public. That's what self-regulation means. It's our privilege to be able to regulate ourselves, and it's also our obligation to honor the public's trust by doing so effectively. Another area I want to touch on is the value of a APEGA membership. Last little while, I've had conversations with fellow members, some of whom have questioned whether they're getting the value they should as APEGA members or permit holders. The principal benefit of an APEGA license is the opportunity to practice engineering or geoscience independently in Alberta and to enjoy the value and trust that the public places in the PNG and PGO designations. As professional engineers and geoscientists, we can make significant differences in people's lives and in their communities through addressing energy needs, designing safe and reliable infrastructure, and developing innovations in medical technology and environmental protection. Vega's role in this is to ensure that the standards of the engineering and geoscience professions are upheld, that our members have the tools to practice competently to contribute to societal well-being, and to ensure public safety. That way, the public's trust in us will be enhanced. And so will the value of our licenses and our membership in the association that grants us those licenses. Mr. President, I'll commit to ensuring that every decision we make as a council contributes to enhancing the value of our APEGA membership. If we think about it, the best way to do that is to work to become an even stronger regulator of our professions. We'll be working with a great group of people to carry out this goal. I'd like to recognize a few of them. I'd like to start by thanking my mentor and friend, George Einan, for coaching and encouraging me during my year as president-elect. Grateful that George continue to have George's guiding hand on council in his new role as past president and chair of the governance and nominating committees. I thank George for his leadership as a PEGA's 100th president, and I thank him for his guidance and friendship. Also joining me on council following this year's election is President-elect Brian Pierce, Vice President Lisa Doig, re-elected councillors Darren Hardy and Rayanne Leach, and new councillors Teresa Watson and Margaret Allen. Pleased to note that two-thirds of the new members on council are women. All of these people are volunteers. They all give their time to serve the professions. In fact, APEGA is highly dependent on its volunteers, with more than 2,200 of them donating more than 52,000 volunteer hours last year. Several hundred of these volunteers serve on statutory boards and various committees that conduct the work of self-regulation. We couldn't call it self-regulation without them and the work that they do. In closing, I'd like to thank you for the trust that you've placed in me, and I pledge to work tirelessly to honor that trust. Well, my fellow professionals, I'll do all I can to lead APEGA to become an even stronger regulator and to serve the best interests of Albertans. Thank you for this honor.